，这一切的关键就在于掌控视野。我现在大龙里面放一个针眼，但是只能保证大龙圈里没有视野，因为这样大龙上方我没有视野，所以对手可以轻易的过来，而且可以和我们抢夺大龙的控制权。我们来做大龙上方的视野，这个眼可以帮我们看到敌方，也可以防止敌方埋伏。因为重要目标都被我们的视野覆盖，古龙想要进入就已经很难了。他想要穿过红 buff 重新拿到大龙的视野，所以我们这次很容易就能抓住他，然后就可以继续进行推进，提防水晶，他会打大龙。你的队友不一定要完美，如果你有充分的准备。Zach and I wore our world hoodie into the basketball courts today because we wanted to remind Oceania that there were actually some people that had represented the region quite successfully actually overseas. So just remind the region of what we should be proud of. You know when you rock up to a footy game and there's just like all these small skinny kids on the other team and you're just not worried at all? Yeah, that's the feeling I had when I walked into the court today. They did kind of cheat by not bringing one of their players. Swiffer was supposed to attend and apparently uh, just doesn't do sport at all. So shout out to Swiffer. So we're the professional players. These guys, you know, they talk for a living and they'll, they'll be able to talk it up pretty well. But once they get in the ring, that's when the true colors come through, mate. And we'll get the W, I reckon. <laughs> I was actually tired before the game started. I used all my uh, all my energy warming up, 
and getting myself pumped up and then I uh, just ran out of juice when the game started. It was a battle. I mean, they came to play, definitely. Johnny is uh, a little bit more of an athlete than the rest of us, I think it's fair to say. It's good to, you know, get back to the court, kind of relive a bit of my childhood, you know, but uh, it's a shame that I, I can't play basketball anymore, obviously. It's always good to get the W. Uh, it's good to play a nice, friendly game of basketball and, you know, hang out with some friends. Overall, pretty happy, but would have been happy if I lost as well. Welcome back to the OPL. If you're just joining us, we uh, just saw a new hairstyle from Spawn, which is uh, Malto Bene. Uh, my name is Michael Hingis Hing, and we just saw Tainted Minds 2 1 over Sin. I'm joined here at the Analyst Desk before we get into match number two by uh, our in house OPL, OPL analyst, Nathan Mendricks Mendez, and also Ceres, the top lineup for Avant Garde. And uh, gentlemen, I, the big question after watching that video is, I can't believe that they didn't get, this guy didn't get the call up to the basketball game. They picked Raz for some reason. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Also Benji. Also our producer Benji got to go. <laughs> what, are, what am I troubled? What is this? What is this? Remember, he makes you look good on camera. That's true. You have to, you have, yeah, to, you have, to you have to give Benji some just spotlight. Feel like, just feel like, you know, but you I, can't I, clearly Raz. I got game, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Obviously, clearly. you look at this, you think, oh, he's a baller. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> let us get into game uh, match two, which is going to be Abyss versus Chiefs as we bring up these lineups. And uh, Mendrix, let me start with you. When you, look at, uh, when you look at the Chiefs, I mean, these guys are playing well and they're going from strength to strength, right? All right, so clearly their basketball game doesn't translate into their actual game, but these guys are pretty much the classy players when they are on the rift. So it is really excellent when you get to see them play. Very classy, almost effortless. They seem to have fun in that mid-game and then absolutely turn on when it matters. Aside from that shaky start that they had against the Direwolves, these guys have really cleaned up their play. Mm. Meanwhile, across the rift, their opponents are going to be Abyss. Series, when you look at these guys, where are they particularly strong uh, this season so far? Oh, I mean, I feel like we've talked endlessly about Frey. Uh, mm. Just <laughs> everywhere yeah. Yeah. across the board because he has only been the really only carry threat on that team. So uh, that's just not going to work against the Chiefs. I think that if they want to win, Seb's really going to need to step up. They have a really solid top laner in Pac-Man. He's not going to falter at all. And their bot lane can play a good supportive style that fits the meta. So if they really want to win this game, and I'm sure they do, they really need to look towards Seb to step up and carry. All right. Well, that carry threat of uh, of, of Frey potentially picking up with Seb. Well, even so, they are really big underdogs going into this game. So when I spoke to Seb earlier today, I asked him how they were preparing for this game. Uh, well, obviously, we're coming in as underdogs. and But anything can happen. Like, even looking at last year, we are coming out as underdogs and we beat them. So, yeah, all I can say is anything can happen. And Just yeah. looking to uh, repeat those uh, sneaky picks from last year <laughs> and uh, maybe edge, eke out a win. Yeah, who knows? Excellent <laughs> stuff. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us and good luck in the game. Thank you. <laughs> Very confident there. Anything could happen. Hmm? When it could. <laughs> it really could be anything at this point. Well, let's take a look at the guys right now as they're getting ready in Studio Abyss Esports. They're very determined right now. And uh, the top laner, Pac-Man, the, the jungler, Seb, who we just spoke to. Frey, the one true mid laner, as we've spoken about a lot. Their AD carry, Raid, and support player, Kuden. And uh, Mendrix, when you look at this team, what's your kind of uh, sense of them coming into this week? So at the moment with Abyss, it seems to be a team that has unrealized potential. These guys had a fantastic week one. They really were being a lot more proactive in that specific game. But when it comes to their week two and week three performances, they seem to just be passively losing. And mm. it seems to be one of those cases where they need to sort of have someone else step up. As um, Sirius was saying, um, mentioned, have Seb step up. He's supposed to be in the carry jungle role. Your bot lane needs to be facilitating more of a support um, or more utility-based sort of meta when you do have these gins, the viruses coming through. So it really does come down to Sep. All right. Well, across the rift, like I said, their opponents are going to be the Chiefs, who are playing very, very well this season so far. When I spoke to their captain, Swiver, I started by asking him what the most difficult thing they've struggled with this split so far has been. Consistency, I think, uh, and that kind of comes through uh, our practice as well, uh, when we're scrimming and everything, and... Sometimes we play incredibly well. Uh, I think it's just mainly on whether or not we kind of stick to the goal that we have in mind. And if we do, then we manage to play incredibly well. And then if we don't, <laughs> it's just hurt. we just flounder <laughs> and flail for like a solid 50 minutes. Yeah. But uh, in terms of where you were in week one versus where you are going into week four, what do you think yep. has been the biggest improvement for you guys so far? Um, well, on stage, it's definitely just kind of, I think, 
the nerves at the beginning of the season and then you know you just realize that it's you know it's kind of like just a game it, <laughs> like it's kind of you should just try to emulate practice right and so um coming from week one we've just slowly been getting steadier and steadier i think and hopefully we can continue that trend you say that it's about kind of pushing down those nerves and yep. uh calming yourselves as captain do you see your role as being able to like lead the men through this or is it absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> uh no i am i'm incredibly susceptible to the uh, to the same follies as men but uh yeah no um i think it's kind of like uh, as a team we kind of bring uh we kind of bring each other up um and you know simultaneously bring each other down at the same time but uh <laughs> you know it, you you rise as a team and you fall as a team absolutely well coming in today your opponent frey uh in the mid lane for abyss has been looking great he's kind of been a real shining light for their team uh as you're going up against him what are you kind of wanting to be wary about um he's just incredible like frey's just incredibly kind of consistent i suppose um he doesn't really look for to like over overplay his hand i guess like a like a lot of other players do that ha like especially in mid lane where there's like a lot of ego and everything mm. um and so the thing that you want to do um when you're playing against him is kind of play the same game because you're usually not going to get a solo kill unless you put yourself at a very like unfavorable in a very unfavorable position so you just need to play the map better all right well yeah. uh best of luck in today and thank you for speaking to us thank you there we have team captain of the Chiefs, Swiffer, talking about consistency and also shouting out Frey, saying he's one of the most consistent mid laners in the scene right now. Well, let's take a look at the guys as they are getting ready. Chiefs Esports Club, and he's starting on that red side. And as we bring up their lineup, let's take a look. Top lane is going to be Swiper, their jungler, Spooks, mid laner Swiffer, we just spoke to. <laughs> their AD carry, Rays, and Ejim in support. And uh, these guys, obviously fresh off the court, going in. Mandrix? <laughs> <laughs> We're looking pretty good at the moment. I mean, they seem a little bit more refreshed than they were after that game, but... Got destroyed by the Shoutcast. This is going to be the most <laughs> embarrassing way to lose, right? <laughs> I don't know. Rusty looked pretty damn good yeah, on the court. Know, Rusty, Same with Swan hitting like, threes. Like, like, yeah, Rusty's yeah. like the hard carry in all sport, though, because <laughs> yeah. he's like... It's like tall, muscular guy. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I think I think an interesting thing recently has been the, the switch last year uh, when Radiant left the Chiefs, and obviously they picked up mm -hmm. Ray. So let's take a look at Ray's because he's been going off this split, Mendrix. Absolutely right. I mean, just look at that kill participation for an ADC that's close to the level of a jungler. I mean, seventy-one point five percent, and his last game he absolutely went off, like nine one seven. Amazing, and his KDAs across the board are just significant. He's been a shining light for the Chiefs the entire time. Yeah, and seriously, when we look at these champions he's playing, Varus, Jin, obviously very standard uh, picks. I Israel, not as standard, but he's still getting the KDA of 14. Yeah, I mean, this is just the testament to his position. Uh, his positioning is really good. He doesn't really get caught, or rarely gets caught out. And yeah, all in all, he's playing very well. But I also think that uh, like some credit needs to be given to his team as well. These, um, this can also be a result of his team just winning the map overall. And he's playing back on these really far range champions that contribute to KDA without necessarily putting themselves in danger. Yeah, you guys are coming up against the Chiefs next mm -hmm. week. Obviously, uh, you know, anyone going up against the Chiefs is kind of underdogs nowadays because they're yeah. on top of the table. Are you wary about Ray's? I mean, you probably don't come into contact I mean, with him in yeah. top lane, but... Um. No, no, I mean, I, I have a great role. So if Ray's comes into contact with me, he's usually dead. So <laughs> <laughs> top, top laners have a nice role in, in comparison to AD carries. Uh, I'm not too stressed about him. Thinking about possibly doing a, a Quinn in there, sort of, if yeah, he yeah, decides to follow, the with, you know, just yeah. sort of... Have some spicy picks. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> it has to be quick. All right. Well, let's take a look at the mid laner we've been shouting out all day. This is Frey uh, for Abyss. And again, just a really high kill participation. That seems to be the set everyone's talking about, Mendrix. And it really just shows that he's there for his team when it matters. And even with that KDA that he has in a losing, like in the fact that he's been losing games, or is it actually fantastic for him to have. And what else he also does is forces a lot of resources. He's been copying a lot of bands from these teams. They know he's a threat they need to worry about. And so it ends up being even a, a greater threat overall because of it. And in yeah. and, series, and, and, and when you look at all these different champions he's been playing, I mean, being able to kind of attempt to carry on, you know, five, six different champions. Yeah, I mean, his champion pool is not shallow at all. You cannot ban this guy out. He really plays everything, and he plays everything very well. They certainly tried to ban him out. Yeah, they definitely <laughs> tried to. <laughs> very unsuccessfully. But, uh, yeah, he plays everything very well. Like Swiffer said, he's definitely very consistent. He's the highest threat on that team. 
And yeah, it's really going to be up to his supporting cast to step up and help him or facilitate his carry. All right. Well, let's uh, let's let, let's have some predictions from you guys. I mean, obviously, Chiefs are heavy favourites for this, but if Abyss, I mean, what is a victory for Abyss today, Mendrix? A victory for Abyss today is to really come together as a team, be very proactive, and actually take games. So if they can actually pull out a two-one that would be considered a victory considering it'd be incremental improvement means to have an impact on the uh, impact around the rift which would be great for them but even if i'm still putting it down to a 2-0 to the chiefs mm. series so what are your thoughts you know actually i completely agree with uh mendrix here uh abyss does not need to stress in terms of their um standings right now it's still early days even though it's it's coming into week five next week but uh, yeah they can still bring it back so what they should be focusing on now is their play that's play itself they shouldn't stress too much about whether or not they're going to be winning these games, although, again, a 2-1 would be great for them, or, or hopefully even a uh, 2-1 in either way, I mean. Mm. Just taking a game is going to be good enough. But your prediction? My prediction is going to be a 2-0 for the Chiefs. I just cannot see uh, Abyss being able to win the series overall. Absolutely. Well, two zeros across the board here. I think that's what I tipped as well, given, uh, you know. But we can see. Maybe they'll be able to take a game. Well, let's get into game one by throwing to our casters, Spawn and Fish. Couple of things first thing is, this is a great hairdo, and I top scored in that basketball game, so I didn't get carried by Rusty at all. <laughs> he certainly did. I mean, Ejim was having a bag of me for my uh, dyslexia on Twitter earlier today, but it seems like you just can't do anything on the court against any of us. So yeah, exactly right. Uh, the basketball was definitely one-sided, and uh, hopefully the game is not so. <laughs> As I look over to my right, somehow I've sunk that into Higgins' cup. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good job over there. Uh, but yeah, we are going to get into Champions Select for game number one between Abyss <laughs> as well as the Chiefs here. <laughs> uh, and, you know, this is going to be a tough series for Abyss. I mean, uh, they've been struggling with proactivity around the map, and I want to see if that is the area that they address because they need to be much better at going forward trying to secure objectives because at times they are able to win team fights, but they can't do it that consistently. Mm -hmm that that is how they're just going to be able to win a game. And therefore, you know, they need to be able to get the good neutral control back. They need to be able to take down turrets and uh, set up some nice sieges. So that's what the meta is all about at the moment. Uh, let's see if they can execute against the best in the business. Well, Chiefs are starting on the blue side, uh, sorry, red side of Summoner's Rift here today. So they should be going for those stock standard three bands to deny the first pick from Abyss. Uh, Zyra Kazix hitting the bench for Abyss Esports Club. Have to see what their final ban is going to be here. Camille should hit the bench last for the Chiefs. Yeah, potentially. I mean, they left it up last week and Swiper played Allowing yeah, into it. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised to see if that was the case again. Uh, you know, it's always good to be able to get rid of the OPs, but it's also okay, you know, to show your hand and prove that you have some counter picks mm. against it. We're about to see what is going to first pick here. Malzahar taken away. Zyra being banned out as well. <laughs> Pac Man showing the talent. Big grin on his face, raises the <laughs> eyebrows a couple of times. But it's going to be the Jace. Uh, you hardly ever see a team turn down Jace. That's still left up and available. And we should see the Varus pick coming out in response from the Chiefs, I would believe, or Jin possibly. They favor that one a little bit more. It's not not today, Swiper. Not today. Of course, Ceres did pick it up mm -hmm. uh, yesterday in their victory. Swiper would love to get his hands on the Viking up in the top lane. He was very upset. Uh, Freak went out on Twitter and let everyone know that there was a Trindamir game going on. Swiper was not very happy that he was not first. I mean, he said that Trindamir is just not good in the meta at the moment. He said kind of that there is so many other champions that do the exact same thing better. Hmm. Uh, he listed Jax and Aurelia as two of those champions. So uh, very vocal about his disapproval, I guess, of that pick. Meanwhile, Chiefs is locked in two 80 carries here. Varus being picked up for Raze in the bottom lane. Swiffer uh, will be taking Corky into the mid lane. Your favorite champion spawn. Hashtag just another Ivan com coming out of uh, the Chiefs right now. Uh, they can pick Disengage on the last three rolls, and that is very obnoxious to be able to get on top of, especially if Kuden goes with Misfortune, because they don't have any Engage, really, apart from the soft Engage that's going to come out of Raze Ultimate. However, that is what they are committed to now against a lot of poke. And we're getting the Misfortune support with Jin, something that the Chiefs actually use very well in the bottom lane. Uh, one of the first things we saw, synergize the captive audience and make it rain. Uh, Chiefs go for the Karma pickup here. They're in the final full pick. poke comp mode. I mean, uh, Karma obviously getting higher priority than the Ivan in this comp. Uh, don't really want to take Ivan into something incredibly aggressive, uh, yeah. unless you can really control the pace of the game. That is Raid, leaning a little bit too far forward. Yeah. 
Getting himself all fired up to play the gym. Yeah, Chief's punishing Ejim as well, making him play Karma. He's very vocal about not <laughs> playing that champion. Rise. First ban coming out from Chiefs in the second ban rotation. His last couple of games on Karma have been good, though. They have. I mean, I know he doesn't like playing it, but yep. at least now he's showing that he can, because mm -hmm. internationally he wasn't even really doing that before. I mean, just press E and run to people, right? How can, how can you go wrong? Woo! You get a shield. You get a shield. Everyone gets a shield. It's Karma in the uh, Last, uh, sorry, second ban coming out from Abyss. Eh? First ban, sorry, from Abyss in their second ban rotation. It's going to be the Fiora. Um, I think it's been 100% ban in second ban rotation this week. It certainly has. I mean, that just seems like some tanks are going to come through. Uh, Big Swift's, of course, known for a lot of his tank play on the Maokai, on the Scion. He's got a Singe running around in solo queue a lot at the moment. I don't know if he's actually going to play it. Big thumbs up for the camera, a cheeky grin. He's a very photogenic man, Big Swift's. He's actually just a really good dude. <laughs> You saw him sink in the jump shot in the game. Uh, he was stoked about that. Uh, he was great fun to play against, super enthusiastic. So, uh, yeah, Brandon Holland, definitely a good character in the OPL. All round nice guy. Cannon, the final ban coming out from Abyss, and we'll have Elise being banned out by the Chiefs. And there you go. It's your old mate, Ivan. Yeah. Ivan and Corky on the same team in the same game. You must be having a great time with someone who's respawned. I, I, I've overcome. Uh, my dislike of these champions enough to stay professional. Fish, I wish okay. I could say the same thing about other individuals on this uh, cast, but mm. you know, unfortunately I can't. Liking uh, <laughs> That's what you meant, right? No. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, but this is just disengage. I mean, this is where you pick Ivan in. Uh, double support's gonna be running around with double AD carries. Super hard to kill anyone. Mm. And uh, they need to get active in the early game here if they're going to be able to take it out. That would be a flex. Woo! Okay. I mean, technically they can do it. They can. Put Varys in the mid lane, Jace in the top lane, something like that. They could. Um, Ejim does not like playing because good Soraka. No, he does not. <laughs> when I said Varys, I meant Jin, of course, the exact same champion, Jin. Mm -hmm. uh, but Maokai, that's a little bit more standard. Yep. Pacman should be picking up that up in the top lane. Very well known for his tank champions. Very solid top laner. Uh, so Frey should be picking up the Jace in the mid lane and waiting for the Chiefs' final pick, which will be for Swiper. Yeah, and you know, when you have a look to big tank line for uh, the Abyss Esports guys, uh, gonna have Rek'Sai as well as the Maokai, then some good poke coming out of Jin, Misfortune, and Ooh. Jace. However, the map's gonna be split up a little bit due to that last pick. Mix, small mix, and Swipe will be picking up the Cinch heading into the top lane. Um, was rising in popularity at the start of the season internationally. Mm -hmm. Kind of fell off for a while, but still is known to do well against tanks. Yeah, it just does well into tanks. I mean, especially Shen. Maokai has enough CC that if a jungler gets up there early, he kind of makes your life miserable, but you can still proxy against him and he doesn't have high base damage. So, uh, Singe, triple rings we're expecting to see, corrupting potion, running around, creating a nuisance of himself. Uh, but in, overall, you have to say a really nice siege comp coming out of the Chiefs and a little bit more stand, a little bit more fight coming out of the Abyss squad. Yep. So I find that Singe will be able to Engage very well into people like Raid, very mobile AD carries. Should see a super run fast build coming out from Singe later on as well. And this has always been the kind of story on the Chiefs. Uh, no one is looking at their comp and saying, we're shocked at what the Chiefs are bringing to the table. This is what they've played many a time before. Yep. Uh, however, when you have a look at you know what uh, Abyss have come, at least they've got a good tank line this time around. They're going to be able to get into those fights and you know look to at least uh, get the 5v5 going. So mm -hmm. I have faith that they can be a little bit more proactive this time around, uh, but you always know what you're going to get out of the Chiefs. It's yep. just whether you can go at the same pace they do time and time again. And I'm really excited to see if Abyss can do just that because they haven't had a great start to the OPL day. I mean, we first wrote them off because they lost Luch. That was the first thing we said about Abyss. They've lost Luch. It's going to be a disaster for them coming into the OPL. And then Frey really stepped up. And he's only he's been the only one that's really stepped up so far for Abyss. So we really have to see the likes of Pac-Man, you know, get up there. Raid and Seb as well really need to start stepping up. Uh, hopefully they can do that against the Chiefs. A very tough match for them to do so, though. Yeah, it certainly is. I think they need a shot caller as they jump onto someone as they're for game one versus the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. uh, because that seems to be the one part of their game that is severe lacking at the moment, that ability to make the decisive call, go in, put it all on the line, and uh, pick up some victories. Of course, that was T-Gun last year. Yep. Uh, Alright, they can do just that in their first match against the Chiefs. For now though, let's check in with their coach, General, who's standing by with Fingers. 
Thanks, guys. I'm here with uh, Coach of Abyss, Sipnav, and I want to start by asking about this comp. A lot of poke in it. Is that something specific you're doing for the Chiefs, or is it a general thing you guys have been practicing? Poke seems to be pretty strong at the moment, so we're quite happy to pick into it. Um, and also, like with Melkai, we've got a nice bit of team fight in there as well, so mm. it should go pretty well. Well, in the top lane, Melkai is going to be coming up against Singe, which is not something we've seen a lot of in the mm. OPL or at all, really, this year. How do you feel that matchup's going to play out? Um, do, if we can um, do well against it, like if we can get some jungle attention up there, um, we should try and shut him down. Um, but hopefully uh, he doesn't get too big. Because <laughs> <laughs> we really hate those Singe games where he's just running through the team, like nobody can do anything about it. So we just have to deal with him. Absolutely. Well, all right. Well, thank you for speaking to us and best of luck with the match. No problem. Of course, that is Sipnav, Abyss's coach. I think General is still a little bit young, so probably studying at the moment. Uh, was their coach for the first couple of weeks. You were correct, Fish. I was for They've it. done the switcheroo on you. I think they did it last week, however, so a little bit of a time lapse. My bad. Mate, mistakes were made. Oh yeah, we did get some insight there for Abyss. The two jump back into the action. The bottom lane already, Kuden taking quite a bit of damage here on Misfortune. Uh, and you can see it's the Cowboy bot lane though for them. Yeah, they're actually trying to prioritize the push here, uh, Abyss. The problem is they didn't really get the push and Kuden has lost double potion pretty much from the get-go. He's going to have to pop another one quite soon, you expect. But now trading back nicely. That's a full make it rain outside of the creep line. Mm -hmm. But still, all three potions are available for Mr. Regium. Oh, you were right there. Seb just missing him. Mm -hmm. Instead, he's going to get the big <laughs> rainbow that tells him that uh, you have been Ivaned. And uh, as you like to say, spawn, ships in the night. Just yeah. pass by Bumping one into one. each other. Oh, no, passing past each other. <laughs> Pac-Man in the meanwhile in the top lane has gone incredibly low. Yeah, Swiper bullying him out a little bit. A little bit of the surface singe going on. Dyrus, mm -hmm. Season 2, would be very proud. <laughs> that was his sin uh, skin, and Singe, of course, was his champion. Ooh, if you're Pac-Man there, you have to be careful. Lots of Singe players will actually, you see that uh, Swipe is not lots of Singe players, but lots of Singe players will actually put double points into E early, push up the wave like that, then try and flip you back into minions when you get aggro, mm -hmm. and really try and take over the lane that way. Uh, Swiper didn't really have the mana to go for it, so instead just put some points into Q. He's going to be teleporting back to lane, you expect. Yep, he's going for the traditional Dark Seal route. Make sure they can stack those up nice and early, get lots of mana from it. A lot of regeneration as well from your potions. And you should be just very content with farming out against Pac-Man in the top lane. Uh, they're going to continue brawling up there as Sev takes away Scuttle Crab on the bottom side of the map. Immediately we can see Ray's and Ejim actually collapsing. Trying to get a couple actually, of Actually, maybe down. a turret dive going to come Ooh. out of the Chiefs here. See Spook's actually looking for a Q, misses. Ooh, takes a turret does shot. stop the recall. Now Swipe is in there. We're going in. Oh, that's just first blood picked up by Swiper. Nice and easy. And that's a lot of creeps going away. So all of a sudden, you know, they've talked about the fact that they don't want to have a massive cinch to contest with. Well, I think the ship might have sailed already, Fish. Mm -hmm. First blood, he's going to get another free recall. He's denied all of that. Uh -huh. Ooh, Sam, that's a little bit... Uh, Spooks, that's a little bit aggressive. Uh, going to have the wave pushing back into him. So everything going his favor right now. An abyss, 700 gold in a deficit. Frey, one more time, the only person that's really standing up. Yep, he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe against uh, Swiffer nice and early. We'll have to see if that's going to hold true later on in the match. Chief's doing very well to kick things off. Swipe has gone back to base, completed his early game build of the Cripple Rings and Corrupting Potion. Spruce has actually gone back to base and picked up Brutes of Mobility nice and early on night. Yeah, certainly has, wants to be able to outpace Seb around, you have to say. Seb's got a big advantage in CS right now, but doesn't have experience advantage at all. Swift actually just takes a shock blast to the face. Mm -hmm. They're equal in CS, but you have to say that right now, Prey is getting the better end of some of the trades with his Corrupting Potion. Could be taking a lot of damage in this bottom lane. Egypt's still sitting on two health potions, nice and easy. They right. stop the recall as well. I mean, this is the danger zone right now. Looking for a gank is Spooks in the mid lane. Never too far away from his good friend Swiffer. Uh, but when the Chiefs are pushing in all three lanes, or at least two at the moment, getting big CS advantages, you know, really forcing the tempo, is when they can just take over because that gives Spooks complete ca access to the uh, jungle. And uh, Swiper wants it. Swiper's going in. Flemings it backward. That's a kill for Swiper in the top lane. But we're checking in with Frey. 
The Spooks is looking to try and lock down with Ejim, get some good damage on towards the Jace. Meanwhile, top lane actually kill traded back. Hmm. All the Dark Steel passive uh, stacks are gone. Goodbye. But still a big creep wave that will be missed from Pac-Man and no teleport to get back into that lane. It's always nice to get a return kill, but it's only going to mean that Swiper level six now can continue to push him. <laughs> He's got boots as well as a Ruby Crystal. Uh, it's not going to be great lane for Pac-Man anymore. It's going to be very difficult to deal with this Singe. Check into that replay again. At least Swiper just flings him backwards and then goes in to get the kill. Yeah, he actually uh, doesn't get the fling at the start of that. He'd already used it. Now he goes in and... Uh, Actually taking a lot of turret shots, so tries to run through, does he? Yeah. <laughs> tries to run through, <laughs> just takes too many and dies. Oh, uh, big slips. Actually looked like he had ultimate. I wonder if he just didn't level it up and therefore didn't hit it for the extra armor. Because if he got it off the level up, he took three turret shots afterwards. Uh, I mean, if he got the level up off the kill, uh, he should have been able to survive that one technically. Still decided to poke out pack the whatever he can with this poison trail. More than happy to just pop a corrupting potion, take a ton of damage after that. Yeah, of course, you know, corrupting potion, poison, death fire, touch, all synergizing very well with each other. And now the proxy starts. He just runs through the turret. He's having a good chuckle. He's got the ultimate available. Even if they send someone to him, I don't know whether they can kill him at this stage. Well, he actually wants Seb. He's falling oh. backwards, get some good damage down. Uh, but Pac-Man's here Ivan as well. Here. Spooks can't quite get in just yet. Gets a nice shield down, locks down Pac-Man. Slides on towards the tree. Uh, but that's just going to deny Pac-Man even more minions. Yeah, I was about to say, all Pac-Man's done is just zone himself. Uh, he's still got the Insanity Potion running. The rule of don't fight Singed when he has his ultimate going. And you can see that top side of the jungle now is just being completely taken over by the Chiefs. And uh, he's continuing to grow a CS lead. Now 20. Ivan's in behind the Jace. Singed is going to get another free recall to just stock up the potion, get Spoots 2, and do it all over again. Mm -hmm. And as he gets towards... Oh, he's actually going Catalyst. Mm -hmm. hmm. So they're going to go Righteous Glory first, looks like. Maybe even go on AP route. Get Rod of Ages or Guho's Singed <laughs> back. Uh, potentially Rod of Ages Singed. That was the old build for him by Righteous Glory. Singed does it very well with his kit at the moment. Ray taking a beating by Ray's in the bottom lane. And not having a great time farming underneath his turret. About 10 CS behind. Has picked up a cull for himself. And Swiffer gets blue buff here. I actually stole blue buff with Spooks earlier. So we'll have his own later on in the match. Scuttle Crab. You taken out by Spooks. Ooh. That's a good shot. I mean, they didn't dodge. Is that a good shot or did they just... Two levels actually for Spooks right now. That's huge. Swiper in some trouble. Hmm. Takes a beating up in the top lane. Ah. Has some potion charges running still, as well as that insanity potion for his ultimate. Mm -hmm. well, he looks like he just wants to continue proxying. He's about 20 CS up over Pac Man. Pac Man, not going to let him go past the lane without a fight. He <laughs> potion be popped by Swiper. Just wants his farm. Raze and Egypt doing a good job of keeping minions off the turret here. Getting some good damage down. Kuda gonna get locked down. Forced to jump away. Swiffer comes in with the package. No more flash available for the misfortune, but exhaust did come out. Big one is gonna whiff. But that should be first turret for the Chiefs. Yeah, potentially, although now the teleport coming in. Ray's actually tanking it. Yeah, there's a teleport coming in from Maokai. Daisy comes up as well. Ray's does get locked down. Singe's coming down as well. He will come out to keep him nice and topped up. Raze is still just pummeling away at this tree. Good snipe from Fraze into the back line. Raze has been taken down. Pac Man flushes out alive. Swipe is going to fall next. Blood time comes out from Kruden to get a kill. And Abyss fight back nice and strong. Huge team fight for Abyss. They were getting bullied out of all three lanes. All of a sudden, they show up. They make the proactive teleport play. And they've got a lead against the Chiefs. This is what we want to see from the squad. Yep. Chiefs go too deep on the turret type, don't respect them, and they get made to pay. Yep. This. We criticize them for not being proactive enough, and they show that they can be right there. And now, even with gold with the Chiefs at the moment, off the back of those kills, and they defend the bottom lane turret most importantly, so no first turret gold being picked up by the Chiefs yet. Frey rotating down to the bottom lane was nice as well there. Yeah, and this was just, I mean, a little bit sloppy. That was a nice teleport to hold the creeps off the turret. All of a sudden, Pac Man's in the back line. It's a late teleport out of Swiper. He doesn't think he needs to come down, and then he's tanking turret as well. And uh, the rest of uh, the squad just show up in time. Frey able to get a lot of damage out there. Kudin with a good bullet time. And uh, the Chiefs fall down. However, now back into the lanes, you expect a 
you know, without that teleport window, a little bit more of the same. Uh, definitely is going to be harder now in the mid lane for sure, as uh, Yomu's Ghost Blade has been picked up for Frey. Mm -hmm. Bottom lane though, still big advantage for Raze, almost completed his own Yomu's Ghost Blade. Uh, whereas Rate's still just sitting on the serrated Dirk. I mean, when you have a look at it, he's got Boots too, which is an extra 600 gold. He's got a Cull, 450. Mm -hmm. So really, they're pretty equal in gold. It's just a difference in itemization choice. Spray actually getting jumped on in the mid lane. So they'll just simply use the Yomus, as well as the Acceleration Gate, to get past that one. And you're right. But actually dead even in gold in the bottom lane at the moment. Once that Cull... Actually, he did the math. <laughs> Once the cold completely stacks, spooks in trouble. He's gonna take a lot of damage here. Flash forward for Frey, and Frey is unstoppable at the moment as he takes him down. Swift has to be very careful. Flash forward from Seb as double bullets raining down from the sky here. Egypt gets sniped off by Ray. Disaster strikes on the map here. As oh. Swift is gonna fall as well. Frey, oh my goodness, this guy's a monster. Certainly is now 3-0-1, and, and the Chiefs are collapsing around the map. 2,000 gold, nearly 1,300 gold the lead for Abyss Esports. They're going to be able to pick up a dragon for their trouble as well. Mm -hmm. It's an important one. It is a mountain. And the Chiefs look stunned. Yeah, 1,500 gold up. Now Abyss strike at all points of the map. Ray's forced to try and hold this mid lane for Swiffer, who went down in that fight. And this is just Spook stepping forward on Ivan, who's defensive, shouldn't be there. Frey beats him to the rotation, flashes on him, and then the rest of the team gets caught in the rotation. I mean, Ooh. really good make it rain into captive audience. Ejim actually runs back in. Next bullet was going to get to take him out. And then the acceleration shock blast. Everything lining up uh, for Abyss Esports. It certainly has been. Frey should be very happy off the back of that. Has double buff at the moment. Doesn't really care about Swiffer's rockets right now. More than happy to fire back. Forces him to Valk away. That's a lot of mana being burnt by Corky. Certainly isn't now without double buff. In fact, facing off against the double buff. Swiffer needs to be careful in that lane because without summoner spells, if Frey ever closes the gap and brings the hammer down, it's going to be risky. Flip into Ivan. Died. Uh, Daisy's coming up. Looking to try and lock down Pac-Man. I don't think you can kill him. Oof, Root's not going to connect. Davey, Daisy's last auto attack doesn't come through either. And now all of a sudden, they're just trading halves of the map. I mean, mm. this is something that the Chiefs are used to. They're going to race them for it on the top side. Ackman actually wants to fight here. Lock swipe underneath the turret. He's going to tank a few auto attacks here. That doesn't seem like they want to fight. Swiper might put him backwards. Good knockback. Stops the fling, but he's very fast, the Singe. And the Root on towards Spooks, but he gets rooted down himself. Just running away. <laughs> get out. Swiper actually goes for it. They will get the flash, but meanwhile they took the bottom lane turret, not first brick. However, still pushing up and Rays can't really defend solo because he thinks the Rexai is still around. He's not too far wrong as uh, Seb is just chilling at the Gromp. Hmm. But now 3-0 on 1 for the mid lane and everywhere else on the map actually clawing back to nearly slight advantages. Rays trying to do what he can to Clean out this mid lane against Swiffer. He's been holding his own really well. Three on one on JC. And just every single game Abyss come into, Frey's always stepping up to play. Certainly is, but the rest of the big thing is, is the rest of the team's gone with him this time. Yep, they certainly have. I mean, as you can see, even in the top lane, Pac-Man, within touching distance, has picked up a return kill for himself and got that good teleport play into the bottom lane. Only 6-7 CS for Raid right now down. And uh, the Chiefs have to swap up their lane assignments pretty drastically because otherwise uh, they can't really go with Abyss at this stage of the game. Checking in with Swiper, he's pe picked up his Righteous Glory with the upgraded boots, but he's going for a Negatron Cloak uh, first. Goes into the, the Raptor Cloak. Mm -hmm. It's uh, interesting though with the only magic damage really coming out from Kudan and Pac-Man. Just wants to be able to go towards, uh, what's it called? ZZ Rock? The Rock Portal, yep. You can see that Pac-Man being ignored again. This must be frustrating when people can just feel they can ignore you. Pac which comes out from Swiffer. Pac-Man trying to do everything he can to stay alive. Valk comes out as well. A very tanky tree. Should be able to run back here. Yeah, potentially. I mean, he's still Ooh. being slowed by the Ivan. 
he will go down here. Pac-Man tries to use the push. Swipe on the top lane, gonna get caught out. Critical comes out as well. Seb's chasing him down. The final shot, is it enough? It's not gonna be. Tanky Swiper is able to get out alive. But meanwhile, mid lane, I mean, three members are just sitting there against uh, Jace, and Jace is wave clearing from distance. Swiper had to burn a lot to live through that. Mm. It's definitely a risk. So the Chiefs trade up because they lose a turret each, but the Chiefs got their man. Swiper was able to live, unlike Pac Man. Uh, however, still down by 600 gold. So early game in favor of Abyss. So it is. Most of that gold is towards Frey in the mid lane. 700 up over Swiffer. Slight advantage for Raid in the bottom lane over Raze. Big Swiffer advantage for Swiper. Mm. Swiffer has completed his Trinity Force with the Sork Brutes, though. Big power spike for the Corky. Yeah, first real power spike online at this stage, however. Across the other side of Summoner's Roof, you can see Boots 2, another serrated Turk, and Pickaxe being picked up for Frey as well as Yomu's. Mm -hmm. So he's well and truly online as well, Fish. Uh, see whether they actually go for the 1v1 duel. This is the Shock Blast combo. A big portion of damage down, but he's got so many members coming into this bottom lane. Swiffer has to be careful. Seb looking for the fight, but decides not to go for it. Yep, just giving him the gentle reminder of the Prey Seeker that he is in the zone <laughs> and should be respected. Ooh. Raid still takes a lot of damage from this poke. Be careful. Does have his Yomi's Ghost Blade now. Uh, so does Raze, who's picked up a tier after. But the scary thing about the Chiefs is, I mean, that was pretty much the dream start to the game for Abyss. And they're right back to even. I mean, 300 gold, absolutely nothing at this stage of the game. So that's pretty much going to be picked up. And uh, unfortunately, even though they get the dream start, the Chiefs are just unrelenting in their pressure. And that's what I said. It's about being able to go with them for extended period of time. All three lanes pushing right now. Raid being abused mid lane because just not quick enough at moving out from all these arrows. Uh, the first to rotate. And you can see that Spooks is still pressuring Seb's jungle. Mm -hmm. Maybe they need to look for another teleport play. Not really any wards available. Bullet time comes out from Kudun, just trying to clear out this wave. Does so successfully. A swipe and trying to rotate down into mid lane as well. Uh, just a bit of a drive by. <laughs> Don't chase the singe. It's not a good idea. Dragon's been set up by the Chiefs though. That is one of the goofiest skins in the whole game, by the way. He has the skinniest legs and the <laughs> biggest feet. Boots actually just eats the Shock Blast from Frey to make sure that the Dragon isn't stolen. Now, Raze might be in a little bit of trouble. Teleport. Yep, Raze not going to get locked down by the captive audience, but flashed on by Pac-Man. Frey goes on a rampage as he picks up that kill. Daisy falls shortly after. They just get the pick they are looking for Another off the back of the teleport Another great teleport play out of uh, the Maokai. Mm -hmm. Able to get down there, cuts off the choke point, flashes the wall to be able to get in. And the Chiefs now actually don't have any priority on the mid lane turret. They've sent a couple of members back to base. They might have to just give it up, Fish. Yep, Abyss going to rush this one down. they got all five members in this mid lane. Out of turret, falls. Puts Abyss 2,000 gold ahead of the Chiefs. Certainly does. And I mean, it's not like scaling is on one team side or the other. In fact, Maokai actually might just get too obnoxious to deal with in this uh, game. Jin not... Uh, Varus really not going to be the auto attack kind of champion. More poke from the lethality build. And the Chiefs, even though they get their claws stuck into the 1-3-1, they had everything pushed up. They weren't really able to get the full commit. Mm -hmm. Red and Kudun going to try and head back to base here, but Chiefs are threatening to try and take red buff as well as the mid lane outer. They currently have Swipe on the bottom side of the map and Pac-Man on the top side. Swiper still has his teleport. Sitting on top of a ward right now are uh, two of the Chiefs members, so you need to be careful with that one. Looks like instead Swift is just going to steal it away. Uh, this is a really confusing early game from the Chiefs. I mean, normally what we see is crisp rotations, the ability to be able to sweep wards behind them before we get in there. Twice they've actually committed on a play and came up Ooh. short, and this might be a third. That's one Shock Blast combo and raises at half health. Frey had flash there, Raze didn't. Mm -hmm. If he really wanted to commit to that one, I feel like he could have killed him. Decides to play it safe, though. Uh, Swiper's still pushing in the bottom lane. Frey is actually sent down to deal with him. Has his easy rock portal now. The little rhinoceros beetles will be streaming out and slowly pushing up the wave. 
And that just is going to keep pressure there for such a long time. I mean, they push a little bit quicker. They're better at taking turrets, of course, don't last as long after the latest change went in. But Swiper now just has the ability to hold Jace in place if that's who they want to match it with. And until Pac-Man really gets his own, there's nothing he can do about it uh, to match the push. And it just means that no teleport on the bottom side of the map. Baron is a real objective right now with how Ivan works. And uh, they need to be aware from Abyss because they've played this early game so well. I mean, they're still 2,000 gold up. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just the priori priority of the map at the moment is still in the Chief's favor. Package being used by Swiffer in the top lane. Pac-Man pops his ultimate. He's trying to kite out as much of the damage as possible. Down to half health, popping Corrupting Potions. He's just going to get locked down here, but nothing happens. He's just look a little bit lost at the moment. Not quite sure where they want to go. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, a little bit of a scuffle between Swiper and Frey. Ooh, Frey taking quite a lot of damage. He's going to have to try and get away from this one. Flashes out. Swiper can't get in range for the fling. Or can, can he? he? Puts down the goo. Not going to go through the turret. Yeah, so not confident enough to commit. However, that has chunked Frey out. And he has magic resistance. Mm -hmm. Chief's still not really able to break the, any of the turrets, however. You can see that... Continually, they're forcing members of Abyss back. However, mid lane still stands. Top lane still pretty healthy as well. And Swiper hasn't even touched this turret yet. Mm -hmm. so, gonna, uh, after all that hard work, they really get nothing. They're going to do a little bit of a swap as Pac-Man takes over Frey's duties in the bottom lane. Frey heads straight back to the top lane, going up against Swiffer. Rapid, cannon, uh, rapid fire cannons being picked up by Swiffer as well and Corky. So big item purchase for him. You can have Redemption being picked up by Spooks as well. And right now, if you were Abyss, you're looking to set up your next play. You have no deep wards right now. Pac-Man's about to get his teleport back available. The way you've got this gold lead is two very good teleport plays onto the back line, being able to pick up key Chiefs members. So that's what you're looking for one more time. Let's get Kudin and Seb back in to establish our ward line. Let's make sure that we've got eyes on objectives at all time. And if the Chiefs greedily go forward for a turret, especially now that mid lane is down uh, in Abyss's favor, they can punish incredibly hard. For now, still sitting on the 2,000 goal lead Abyss. The only person that's died in this game for their team is Pac-Man, who's on your screens now trying to deal with the Swiper. Swiper is getting pretty big, 200 CS already. ZC right portal is uh, slowly trying to push out, but the Sunfire Cape just takes him down nice and easy. Swiper now looking for a flank. He's behind Abyss. Oh, Frey going 1-1 one -one against Swiffer. Can he get it? He does! He gets the solo kill against Swiffer! And Frey is huge. 5-0-1. Swiffer actually doesn't keep his distance. Goes into melee range against a Jace and gets made punish for it. And you can see the Chiefs just can't get anything done. Wave clear is too good in the mid lane. They can't land sticky enough to poke to be able to force them all back. I mean, Pac-Man is just an immovable brick now. Sinch isn't going to win this part of the game. He's only just going to trade farm. And there's no real other objectives to get them out of their lanes. And because of how big Frey is, he's just going to win any 1v1 you send him into. Mm -hmm. Five on one. He's, he's got his hex drinker now as well. Pickaxe being picked on top of that. Chase is an absolute monster. Even more shock blast. Raise a half health from one. That captive audience land, that would have been lights out for Raze. Yeah, it certainly would have been. And right now, that means that they're set up one more time to take the next dragon. Raze has got nothing he can do right now. Needs to get a recall in. Potentially, they rust Baron. I mean, really, there's Chiefs are out of options. Desperate Baron never fails. We've got a control board on it. Infernal, Infernal Dragons, we started. Yeah. They're going. They're going to try and rush it. They've got the control ward to try and stop the, any vision from going down. Baron's been started. Daisy is pummeling away at it, but this is very, very slow. Abyss are slowly moving towards the pit. Yeah, they've got, needs to go over. They've got Misfortune and Jace. They can deal a heck of a lot of damage. Gets spotted out. There's the scrying on. There's the teleport. There's the redemptions. He's just taking damage. Big bullet time coming out from Kudan. They'll take down one. Swiffer's in a lot of trouble here as well, but will Valk over the walls? Chiefs still take up the Baron. And that was the play that the Chiefs needed. They lose their support player, but they're able to get the Baron buff. And maybe now the 1-3-1 one, one becomes a little bit easier to execute upon. Meanwhile, Abyss, they got the Infernal Drake, they were able to get a kill, and now they're streaming down mid lane to see if they can punish the fact that the Chiefs lost a member. Well, they put down a lot of rush here. Seb going to take a lot of damage, tanking the turret as well. Package is available for Swiffer. 
but they're still going to lose their mid lane in a turret here. Swift is still actually posturing aggressively. I mean, do they group up as five? Really, Swiper used TP. Uh, so not going to able to split push very effectively if Maokai wants to join the fights from the get-go. Package is going to expire shortly. And, you know, still within touching distance of the Chiefs, but definitely will not be feeling confident after mm. the start of this game. I mean, the only reason why they're in this game now is because of that cheeky Baron. If not, it would have been a much uh, stronger game at the moment for Abyss. Looking for a dive onto Pac-Man again. Jumps on top of Swiffer and instead going to get locked down by Ejim, taking a lot of damage. They're still poking away at this big tank tree, but can soak up a lot of damage. Chugging, corrupting potions. Daisy's been called out. Chiefs now looking to poke away and continue sieging. Kurtikol looking to try to deter them from going any further. Swiper just stands straight in front of the gun. Says, you can't snipe me if I'm close range. Get out your knife, mate. Let's go fight. <laughs> Swiper is now charging on through. We'll get locked down this time round. Ray takes an arrow to the knee and he has to back the heck out of there. It's not high noon anytime soon. This turret's going to take a lot of damage. Chiefs barreling it towards Abyss's base. They're looking to try and take the inhibitor turret, but Pac-Man's back. Got to be very careful. Seb going to get locked down again, but slowly Chiefs just chip away at Abyss one by one. Exactly right. The Chiefs force in now with the Baron buff. Very confident in the ability to do so. They also left behind the Zerot portal in the mid lane. Ejim took a shock blast. That might actually deter them from the rotation that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, but able to pretty much equalize the gold with that play there, the Chiefs. Ooh, this uh, this mid game, I mean, that was an explosion. Just because the Chiefs picked up the Baron, as you said, good sneak came across. Uh, they were able to do it, but otherwise, you know, the team fight's looking good right now for Abyss. They've got the Chase exactly where you want him. 6 0 and 1. Still up big, 1300 gold. Pac Man starting to scale. I mean, the Jin's always going to be relevant just through the ultimate. However, now they have to be able to save turrets versus Baron Bob. One guy I really want to speak about here is Kudan, because we've given him a lot of flack, a lot of criticism the past few weeks. He stepped up in this game. Synergizing very well with Raid, has had some great uh, make it rain ins into bullet time. He's got his Black Cleaver now, so he'll be contributing very well in damage. Crucial wave clear, mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say. I mean, he saved that mid lane turret a couple of times in the mid game. And you mm -hmm. can see that the Chiefs, they want to play this one nice and slowly. Uh, in the ideal world, I mean, they never even had to fight in this game. They just poked down, but because they gave away early kills, uh, Abyss were definitely more than equal to the challenge, and now they're looking for it again. Spruce is going to get slow there. Uh, Seb was threatening to engage. A little bit dangerous, however, because Swift is still in the bottom lane. Oh, Swift has got a guy in the That is very devastating. Not going to be easy to deal with the Singed anymore. Swift doesn't have his Baron buff at the moment. No, no one does. Yep, that's going to expire. expire. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens. Doesn't last forever. Uh, that would be nice. However, oh, still wow. able to pick up the turret. Sneaks the turret down. Frey actually taking quite a bit of damage in this bottom lane. I wonder if Swiffle wants the redemption. Uh, does he go in for another 1v1 fish? Do it. I think he's going to lose again if he does, is the reason I ask. <laughs> that's why he should do it. <laughs> uh, 29 minutes in. When you compare the kills to the first series of the game, oh my quite goodness! A slow one. Gotta go fast, gotta go quick, gotta go strong as Ray gets jumped on by this Singe. He's still gonna be able to back out in time, but gets assassinated by a good old Earth Corky in the back lines. Chiefs now really wanna go for the fight. Redemption comes out nice and early. Pac Man's been flung back into the action, but they pick off the AD carry, and he's just a sitting duck against this Singe. I mean, Singe went so quick then. Can you really blame the man? Pops the ghost, pops the potion, as well as the righteous glory, and then gets a speed up from Ejim on the way past, if you don't mind. And as you said, uh, he flew into that back line. Yep, turned on the sirens. Everyone pulled over to the left, parked and waited for the ambulance to go by. Swiffer just picks it up nice and easy. And uh, now the first real meaningful gold lead for the Chiefs. Uh, lost out in the mid game. It delayed this spike quite significantly. But now 2,000 gold in the lead with a very tanky Singe, you can see, looking a little bit more normalized. Swift has gone back to base after that, picked up an Infinity Edge for himself. So very strong Corky at the moment. And uh, Swift is just getting tankier and tankier, looking for his dead man's plate. If, <laughs> if only he couldn't go any faster. Yeah, got to get another go quick item in there. However, what we need to look for right now is Abyss is still not out of this. They're within 1,600 gold still. 
And I think that if they get the Maokai onto the back line, onto Rays, onto Swiffer, they still have a fighting chance. So no deep wards at the moment. They really need to correct that. Make sure they're setting up well around these objectives because Maokai will keep a whole back line busy. Siege just kind of chases one person yep. and then is irrelevant to everyone else. Well, Dragon's up and available. Package has been picked up by Corky. Seems like Chiefs want to find Seb. Poked a little bit here. Spruce not going to take too much damage. Edge of Knight being caught by Raze there. Doesn't take a shock blast to the face though. Seven Spooks fighting is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Slapping each other. Spooks actually going over the wall there. Um, dodges out the captain's audience. Swipers in the back line. So Ray taking so much damage. Raze takes him down with an arrow. Just seems like it keeps happening. Ray just gets charged at by a surfer singed. Yeah, and says, packaged on as well. So that was actually a little bit of suspect positioning at the same time out of Raid because his front line was kind of, I don't know, what were they doing with Spooks? They were just kind of standing there staring at Spooks and then unfortunately he got caught out by a package as well as the go quick singed. Mesmerized by the Ivan. Certainly were. That is a good way to put it actually. Mesmer mesmerized by the Ivan, I like it. Um, so the Chiefs get another pick that forces more farm over to onto them. They're going to be able to pick up the first <laughs> dragon of the game. <laughs> They've already got a cloud dragon. They want another one. <laughs> Swiper just likes this. It's a great game with the Singed. It certainly is. They have, <laughs> however, lost a lot of priority around the Baron. And we keep talking that maybe, just maybe, if they're able to get a good team fight and that Maokai access to the back line, they will be able to take a team fight. Mm -hmm. Baron's back up. Uh, Chiefs are now in the lead. 2,000 gold up. Not very significant, 32 minutes in. Like this, they want this Baron. Yeah, and they're actually using the teleport to be able to get it. The Chiefs Ooh. do know. Let's see if they can take it down fast enough. They're already here. Spooks spots them out. Baron down to below, half health. Abyss peel off. They're on top of Spooks to kick things off. Redemption's gonna come out. Swipers into the back lines. They take down Spooks. Super knocks back Frey. And now the Chiefs are slowly streaming in. They shut Ooh, down Frey. Curtain call comes out for Ray. Only gets a single shot off before the Chiefs charge on through. Big ultimate coming out from Kuna, but it just delays the inevitable. Swiper says, surf's up, dudes. Let's go. Throws him backwards, picks up the kill and now the Chiefs will slowly stream into Abyss's base. I mean, they're just unrelenting. Swiper is unkillable and just chases them down and delivers a member to the <laughs> Chiefs light up, one after the other. Uh, and that will mean they're lost team fight for just Spooks' life. It is only the AD carry and jungle are left. And with double AD carries, they're looking to break open the base. That base is going to fall shortly. <laughs> Raid really scared of this singe at the moment. Continue to look to see if he can chase them down. Inhibitor turret falls. Inhibitors are both being attacked. One by three members of the Chiefs. Swift is on the bottom side of the map, taking down the bot lane inhibitor. So he does take a little bit of damage. Doesn't care too much at the moment. Big Swift. No, he certainly doesn't. I mean, he's a quick man. He is certainly durable. You have to kill him a couple of times, which is never a good feeling. Let's take another look at this. So Spooks goes in, pretty much sacrificing himself. Gets the redemption down nice and early. They're going to be able to layer that again. Uh, but at the same time, Swiper just flies into that back line and they're able to chunk Ooh. out the crucial member of uh, Frey. As I said to before, Ray really didn't want to ult there. Not able to use it at the end of the fight. Kuden turns around, plays good deterrent, but Swiper is just too quick and able to deliver him back to the team. Uh, Abyss have really made some good proactive calls. They're still only 5,000 gold down, but now with the base broken in two areas, Baron back available. Uh, the Chiefs are going to slowly start in pretty methodical Chiefs fashion, trying to close this one out. 35 minutes in, however, Abyss still have that fighting chance. Mm -hmm. It's a very big Ivan. It's uh, <laughs> got the Iron Elixir going there. Oh, actually didn't check the back of the pit there. Get Gonna get now. the glimpse of it, yeah. The they certainly would, Ivan. <laughs> it's Pac-Man and Seb looking to see if they can get the flank going. Uh, now they're down a significant amount of gold. 5,000 down against the Chiefs. Like you mentioned, Baron is up and available. But slowly, minions are going to start streaming in towards Abyss's base. And they have to send someone to deal with it. Pac-Man tried to use his teleport to get the Baron earlier. Now the Chiefs have started it up. They've got the brush to hide Baron from vision. He keeps taking a couple of shots there. He needs to be careful. They finally bring Swiper in to tank it. I feel like the turn is on. Pinnacle comes out. Swiper trying to run towards the team. Good lockdown from Pac-Man, but they've already lost Raid. 
Swiffer now going to try and go into the back lines. Kuren is dead. Swiper picks up the kill. Pac-Man is a sitting duck inside of his own forest. Seb, it's the last man standing with Frey here. He's just going to be ignored because all they want is this chase, and the base is already being destroyed by Super Minions. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, the Chiefs, they get the team fight they're looking for. Swiffer dives into the back line, able to pick up a much needed kill. And with that, the Chiefs will just stream in double waves of Super Minions still there. 35 minutes into the game, not pretty, but Chiefs take game one. They certainly do. They close it out after a fantastic showing from Abyss to kick things off, but Chiefs, just in chief style, still able to pick up the win. Yeah, exactly right. You can see that even though they fell behind, they never really got thrown off their game plan, which yep. was sit in 1-3-1, get items, uh, <laughs> just run around as a big beefy Sige, as uh, you can see that uh, he's just tossing people over his shoulder. Spooks gets in on the action, but uh, Swiffer doesn't look too pleased with that game. Mm -hmm. I mean, he got dunked by Frey. He did. I mean, that's very fair. Got 1v1 killed. You never like that. I mean, that's what happens when you don't show up to basketball. Uh, you get dunked on the rift instead. All right, Abyss have to be pretty happy with their performance to start that game off. They didn't pick up the win, but it's the first time I've really seen proactive play from them. Oh, 100%. And uh, I actually think that this is good that they're playing the Chiefs now because when you play against the top team, and you're the big underdog, you're like, we have nothing to lose here. Mm -hmm. Let's go in and throw everything we have at, have at them. And they look back at that early game and they're like, that works. Like, if we can play that style of League of Legends, get the teleports rolling early, we'll be able to take games against everyone else. It's good that they've shown it against the Chiefs. And if they can continue doing this in this series, they can potentially take a game off the Chiefs. Yep. Who knows? Maybe come back 2-1 here, as that was the only the first game of this best three series. For now, though, let's check in with Hingers and the rest of the analyst. Well, there we have it, guys. Chiefs 1-0 over Abyss Esports. And uh, I'm joined here by uh, top laner for Avant Garde series and also our in-house OPL analyst, Nathan Mendrix mendez And I, I <laughs> this game, right? So it starts, Abyss take an early lead. They're feeling pretty confident. They're making proactive plays. But then the Chiefs just sort of like slowly grinding out these wins, almost like <laughs> against their own will. Just like, oh, I guess we've got it. Like it was, <laughs> it, it was like, oh, it was, I don't know. I, I, it was definitely a grind coming back for the Chiefs there. They, they sort of like did it themselves when they had that overextension in the end there. And Abyss made the proactive play. They saw their opportunity. They strike, And it's exactly what we wanted to see from Abyss. And if they can continue to do that, that's the sort of gameplay that sort of helps them make that impact around the map. And this is what we're looking for. But the Chiefs, again, just sort of not effortlessly, but they grind it out and they do turn on when it matters like they, like they always do. Yeah, series. When you when you look at the Chiefs' play, I mean, w they went behind early, and these are guys who were used to playing from in front, so they were, had to kind of like fight with themselves. Look, we need to change our play style. We need to like sneak a baron. We, need to, you know, so in, in in your opinion, like playing from behind, playing from in front, like the Chiefs are showing multiple abilities uh, to win games. Yeah, although I would challenge you on that point and mm. say that uh, I think a lot of the season they have played from behind. Actually, uh, mm. versus Tainted as well, they did the same thing. They snuck the baron. First Direwolves too, uh, Ejim got a Miracle Steal on the Baron and seems to, <laughs> the Baron just seems to favor the Chiefs for whatever reason and pulling them out of the holes that they dig themselves into, yeah. but I mean. At Mark Merrill, let him know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. All right. right, well let's take a look at the draft, uh, because obviously the Singed pick is something that we haven't seen before in OS Mendrix. Mm -hmm. Well, no, we have seen it before actually, it was, um, Tally actually played it last week. Yep. Did he? Oh, my it goodness. Yeah. No, my apologies. <laughs> it just uh, did not have great success. Yeah. Right. Sorry. So th <laughs> but but this time, uh, Swiper has an amazing setup for him. So he has the Ivern Shield. He has the Karma speed up. He has basically everything he could imagine to help uh, facilitate his cinch play. And he pulls it off. Like, he does a very good job of uh, doing what his team needs to do. He just runs at them, flings them back, and that's basically the comp. And typically what you find as well is Singe does really well into Maokai as well. I think you might have experienced this yourself at some point in time. I think the big thing about it is that Maokai actually is unable to use his sustain as much because Singe just keeps these potions running. Is that, is that what you find most of the time? Yeah, I mean, I think that Pac-Man played the early game very poorly. He should not have died uh, early. He should mm -hmm. not be chunked enough to yep, for yep. that dive to happen. And if that's the case, then he needs to be able to call and communicate with Seb so that it doesn't happen. But we're just speculating now, but if you look at that draft and you see the Fiora ban and the Cannon ban, do you think that uh, the Singed pick is just as a result of those two being banned, or do you think that this is something the Chiefs have practiced, just no, looking no, at their no. play? Uh, I definitely think this is something that the Chiefs have practiced. I don't mm -hmm. think that Swiper would um, have a tendency to go towards those types of champions in the first place, mm -hmm. although he might. Uh, but yeah, I think Singed is he's just something that's re he's really comfortable on. And I mean, he definitely looked comfortable on it. I mean, he was 
absolutely dominating Pac-Man in, in the top line. All right. Well, let's. We we talked earlier about uh, act, the proactivity uh, from Abyss and how they did start well. So let's take a look at this replay from early on in the game, Mendrix. So the Chiefs force force their hand really at this point. They said they jump in, they go, yes, we can find a kill. But Abyss do a great job to kite back and look at Pac-Man. He's the one that keeps the Chiefs in this fight. They want to retreat at this point, and that buys all the time in the world for Frey to come in and just absolutely clean up. And Abyss find the fights that they want to have. It sets them up great for the um, rest of this early game. But in the end, Chiefs do grind it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, that's the thing, is that they needed to continuously do these plays and make these plays across the, the entirety of the game. But during the mid-game, there was sort of a lull where nothing happened. Basically, mm. nothing happened. They just stuck to the Chiefs. I mean, they played into the Chiefs' hands. They went through the one through one and they matched them. They don't want to be doing that. They want to be... Uh, making aggressive plays. They let them mismatch the Jace into the Singed, and the Singed almost 1v1 the Jace. I mean, these things just cannot happen if Abyss wants to win. Cannot happen. Nope. <laughs> cannot we happen. Serious will not allow it. Uh, we <laughs> talked earlier about the Chiefs sneaking a Baron. Let's take a look at this again, because uh, Mendrix, I mean, <laughs> just hiding in them Ivan brushes, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's funny because the water's there as well. So I'm thinking the Chiefs are, like, happy with everything at the moment, but it's just so such typical fashion for them to do it. And Abyss sort of... Probably thought they had enough time to get there, get back. Chiefs do a fantastic job of getting the Baron and getting out with only one person dying. And that's the big point to take away from that. If the Chiefs had lost more, this Baron was absolutely not worth it. But for them to come out with only one death allowed them to continue facilitating that 1-3-1 that they needed so badly and continue grinding out the game to victory. Yeah, I mean, you saw a, a, a big mistake, I feel, there is they could have picked Swiffer's Baron there. Mm -hmm. uh, Frey backed out for, I guess, no reason. I didn't, I think... I think that he thought that uh, Swiffer had Valkyrie up and he could just W over the wall, but Pac-Man gets a nice route. That's all he needs. He could blow him up in that uh, in that instant. And it's super important taking away Barons from the splits from the side lanes because uh, they just don't have as much pressure. Yeah, I'm, I'm an adult and I'm a grown man, but I will never stop giggling at the phrase, nice route. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Frey, uh, <laughs> we're just doing Do my that. best. I'll do he, my best. I mean, let, let's, say, let's take a look at this guy. He is doing, I mean, he, at one point he was like 601. He's like 300 CS. Like, what else did he have to do to carry this team, then? <laughs> I mean, it really is. It, okay, what I want to actually touch on with this is that Seb was doing a great job helping to facilitate him. They were working so well in that mid game, but they just never kept up that same level of strategy, or that, or that same level of play to keep Frey going, to keep that momentum that they had picked up in the early game. And it really is a matter of them reverting back to that passive style. They need to stop doing that. They need to understand that when they have the advantage to get ahead and continue being proactive. And it ends up being the story of their entire season. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, serious. I mean, it's, it's just... That there's signs of life, and yet still, just yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's it's frustrating, and I'm sure it's frustrating for them as well, because mm. especially in this game, they obviously came very close to being able to push the Chiefs over a breaking point, maybe a gold threshold uh, that they might not be able to climb back from. I mean, if you, if anyone gets a Jace that far ahead, he should just be stomping people. Luckily, uh, Chiefs had a great comp to deal with them. They can they can deal with the poke, and that's what really made this game very difficult for Frey to carry. It's because they just have shields upon shields upon shields, and it just nullifies Jace's poke. And from that point on, he's just stuck trying to hammer farm people down and his team just cannot follow up. All right. Well, the Chiefs are ahead 1-0 in this, our second match of OPL Sunday. Can Abyss claw it back and take a win? I mean, they've done it before in the past. We'll be at game two after this. Into the back line. Raze has been taken down. Pac-Man flushes out alive. Swiper's going to fall next. Bullet time comes out from Kuda to get a kill. As double bullets raining down from the sky here. Egypt gets sniped off by Ray. Disaster strikes on the map here. As oh. Swiffer's gonna fall as well. Frey! Oh my goodness, this guy's a monster. Oh, oh Frey going one one against Swiffer. Can he get it? He does! He gets the solo kill against Swiffer! Gets one and out. There's the scrying on. There's the teleport. There's the redemption. He just taking damage. Big bullet time coming out from Kruden. They'll take down one. Mount Baron down to below. Half health. Abyss peel off. They're on top of Spooks to kick things off. Redemption's going to come out. Swipers into the back lines. They take down Spooks. Super knocks back Frey. And now the Chiefs are slowly streaming in. They shut Ooh, down Frey. Kurtzakor comes out for Ray. Only gets a single shot off before the Chiefs charge on through. Big ultimate coming out from Kruden. But it just delays. Lays the inevitable. Swiper says, Surf's up, dudes. Let's go. Throws him backwards. Picks up the kill. 
Comes out Swiper trying to run towards the team. Good lockdown from Pac-Man, but they've already lost Raid. Swiper now gonna try and go to the back lines. Kunin is dead. Swiper picks up the kill. Pac-Man is a sitting duck inside of his own forest. Seb is the last man standing with Frey here. He's just gonna be ignored. capture the vibe. Does the character make sense with the art, with the lore, and with the music? This is all one package. And if it does, then we've all done our job. And if it doesn't, we can improve on it. Every bar, every decision that's made needs to be based on what works for that character and what does that character feel like. The concept often is so strong, and then the only thing that can fail is yourself in the execution. Thank you one more time, please. Just keep going. Nope. Just keep going and keep going. Take 82. Well, I'm not a violinist, but that doesn't, that doesn't seem right. I don't want to disappoint our players, you know. If the goal is to create something new, then basically anything's fair game at that point. You're shooting into the darkness. There's a lot of, like, crazy tactical shit, too. How does it make sense? I think it probably makes, makes literally zero sense. <laughs> We're all gamers. We're all nerds, you know? We could spend a lot of money during the recording session, get all these instruments, and they make a, a big ruckus. But if the vibe isn't right, then we've failed in our job. If you construct a great piece of music that brings people into your world, those things tend to stick around forever. Those memories tend to stick around forever. We've been ahead the whole game. I got fed early, so this game should be a free win. But since we are ahead, my team gets cocky and starts trolling. They get caught, and now we maybe lose Nash. But I'm really fed, so there's still a chance that we can win this fight. This game was a free win a minute ago, but whatever. They had to burn some wolves to take down Tam, though. In case it's also strong, and Nuno can peel for her. I know I have TP. But if I TP to the Nash Pit, I get one shot and die. Next to the mid lane wall, I'm too far away and I can't deal damage. I choose to TP to the blue off wall, so I'm in a good position for flank. As I TP in behind them, Kate and Nuno stall by catching enemy team in the middle of Baron. 